Being with us, join us from our Abuja studio is a famous Nigerian stand-up comedian, actor, master of ceremony, and entrepreneur, Sheyi Law. He will be speaking on the state of the nation, uh, the fact that he recently trended uh, 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 based on the comments he said recently. Hello, Sheyi Law. Thanks for joining us. Are you there? Yeah, I'm right here. Yes, yeah, good to have you. have been trending, you know, hey, in the last few days. Everywhere is Sheyi Law, left, bus, bus, left, right, and center. But let, let's, let's start from the beginning um, of this because um, the first tweet I believe you posted was when you were trying to express your pains and um, how you can relate with what Nigerians are going through, saying that you'd rather go where well, vote for or be with a Moses or support a Moses who is taking us through the wilderness than stay in, um, in Egypt eating and drinking and, and at the expense of the future of our children. Many thought that was a very profound statement, but unfortunately, people went for you, saying that, you know, left, right, and center here. And what exactly were you trying to achieve when you said that initial, when you posted that initial comment? Okay, um, well, what actually happened was uh, that in, in 2020, uh, 2012, you know, Nigerians came out to protest against the removal of fuel subsidy, and I was I was against it then because I remember when we were at Ojota during the protest, and it was time for me to speak. I went on stage, and I said that we shouldn't protest against the removal of fuel subsidy. That what we should protest about, or what we should ask government is accountability and what they are going to do with the money saved from the removal of first subsidy. That if, um, I felt then that um, uh, we had to go through the pain of the subsidy removal to get to a better Nigeria that we all seek. And I felt that um, the pain of that first subsidy removal is the wilderness that we had to go through to get to our Kenya land. You know, I knew that I was going to come with a lot of complaints and all those stuff till we get it right. But also the administration that I support right now, also I think um, some people from this administration politicized uh, the first subsidy remover then. But then I supported this administration and they've gone ahead to remove the first subsidy and um, it has come with its pain. And I believe it's a time in the wilderness, you know. But also not forgetting the fact that even when the children of uh, Israel were in the wilderness, they enjoyed some sort of manna, you know. And even uh, Moses had to bring water from the rock. And so, which is the reason why I used uh, that uh, analogy. Uh, to call on the government that at this time when uh, uh, the pains of the first subsidy remover is biting hard on the people, we should have some certain level of um, uh, 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 soccer from the government. You know, I believe that uh, one of the things that Nigerians want right now is to see that we have um, food is affordable and that um, we have money to be able to buy the, 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 the food that we have, and which is why okay. I'm calling for, you know, the uh, increase in minimum wage. And, um, you know, we should try and make food available okay. and affordable. Let me get a few more questions for you. Go ahead, What do you say to Nigerians who feel because you supported this administration, then you have no moral justification, no moral right to speak about um, the pains that Nigerians are going through? In fact, there's also another trending video saying, um, Idris Abu Karim, saying that you spoke with him and told him you regretted supporting the, um, this administration. So, you know, people are questioning, are you, with your friends in the back, do you think a certain way and then you come and show face? What do you say to Nigerians that, are, you know, that have this opinion? Um, for me, I, I'm a pri private citizen. I don't, I, don't, I don't hold any position in government. And um, uh, as a comedian, I'm supposed to be a critic of, of, of government. 
And as much as I want to criticize um, government, I want to also do it constructively. And the fact that I supported this administration, it means that uh, I have a vested interest in the administration. The failures of government bite hard on every one of us. And the success of the government also impacts all of us. And so as a private citizen, as a Nigerian, I have a right to speak to the people in power. I have a right to speak concerning the government of the day. You know, governance is for all of us. And I don't blame Nigerians who have their grievances against me. I'm not one who we, you know, uh, blame people for insulting, for abusing. I knew what I signed up for when I supported the government. I knew that if they removed the first subsidy, uh, it was going to come with some level of hardship. I also knew that uh, the unification of the Naira was going to come with its own side um, uh, of um, issues in Nigeria. So uh, when Idris um, released that video and he said, I told him, well, I didn't have a side uh, discussion with Idris consigning uh, uh, voting the government. No, I didn't have that with Idris. And you can see that his former colleagues are coming out to debunk some of the things he said on the, on the podcast. Right. Okay. You know, Idris is somebody that I respect and I wouldn't want to, to trade insults with him. Okay. You know, I respect him All right, let me get and I wouldn't want to trade you. insults with him. I'm a comedian. I can, I can go on stage and joke about the government of the day. In fact, as a comedian, the failure of government is a better joke than the success of government. Mm -hmm. right. But as somebody who voted for this administration, I want to see this government succeed, and I want to see Nigerians living better. Okay. Go ahead, Jola. All right, fantastic. Shei, hi. Nice to see you again. Um, so... As one who has the interest of Nigerians at heart, which also um, contributed towards your choice of governorship and who to vote for, and I understand that you are currently in talks and lending your voice towards speaking for the people and helping bring the change that we are all praying for. What areas are you in talks concerning, and what exactly, if you had the chance to propose, what exactly would you propose the government to do differently? Um, one, one, of the, one of the areas where I've been talking to people about is the area of um, uh, the increase in minimum wage. I know that there's been committees set up by the government to review uh, the minimum wage, but I think um, uh, one of the things that I'm not seeing is timeline for issues to be resolved. You know, it's, it's nine months already in this administration, and um, I expect that in another month or a month or thereabout, there should be an announcement for the, the increment of minimum wage. Secondly, another place where I, I, I've also tried to lend my voice is the, in the issue of uh, the unification of uh, the exchange rate. I believe that... Um, we don't need domiciliary accounts in Nigeria. If we have a unified exchange rate and banks are controlling this aspect, we should be able to spend our Naira cards abroad and have it converted to, you know, uh, to any currency where we're using our Naira card. If the, ex uh, the exchange rate has been unified, that should come into effect. I don't see the reason why Nigerians should own domiciliary account. I also believe that um, we should be able to call the uh, amount of uh, uh, forex in the hands of, uh, of Nigerians. I don't see why somebody will be stockpiling $100,000, uh, millions of dollars at home. There should be a law that prohibits that. No Nigerian should be able to walk around with, with anything, even at home, with anything more than $10,000 US dollars. And also, in terms of uh, food availability, this is an area where I've also been be trying to lend my voice. We know of the Ankara's Borough's uh, um, uh, project during the uh, Buhari's administration to try and see that um, we are able to grow 
uh, food sufficiency in, in, uh, in Nigeria to feed the nation. But I think because of the current uh, exchange rate issues, some Nigerians who are beneficiary of this um, government uh, subsidy in terms of food production are beginning to divert food that are meant for Nigerians to neighboring countries. Uh, I know that uh, recently we had uh, the case where Customs said this is about 50 trucks of food that were headed to Niger Republic. This is a nation that have an issue with um, Nigeria and ECOWAS at large. And these are some of the things that some of our citizens are doing to sabotage government, uh, the government. Okay, let me get and so, for you. Uh, Taylor, do you regret that tweet? Is this something you wish you didn't just see? Maybe you just kept it to yourself. Did you get my question? No, I said, do I regret what? You regret putting that message out. First one. No, 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 the no, no. I don't one. regret it. No, because um, this, is, this, is, this is me as a person. I supported this government, and I'm not somebody to come and start um, crying and say that, oh, I regret the fact that I supported the government. I have supported the government, and I'm lending my voice and I'm lending my time to see that the government succeed. That is what I want to see. If the government succeed, Nigeria will be better for it. Yes, I understand and I empathize with Nigerians on the current suffering, and which is why we're calling on government to, to make sure that issues are treated with time, uh, uh, with, uh, on, uh, with time based. You know, people should be able to know that, okay, at so so time, Timelines. This is what government wants to do. Uh, you know, there should be a timeline to, to some of the, the uh, issues that government are treating, which is one of the reasons why I love the Minister of Interior. He came out to say that by, gen by, gen uh, uh, by February 8th, that Nigerians will be able to apply for their passports online up to the point of biometric uh, collection. And that is what we have seen. And he has spoken about the e-gates where people can scan their passport and have their data collected as they move into the country or out of the country. So we have less interaction with people uh, uh, in the immigration service. And this is what we are seeing. So every other minister should be able to come out and give timeline for what they are doing. And that is what we are asking. I'm, that I'm is how we support government. We must ask them the right questions, and we must criticize when we think they needed uh, to be criticized. I'm, I'm really on your side on this particular conversation, that's the truth, because I feel that it is easier for the government to swallow a bitter pill from their supporters than from the opposition, and we need to have more people that openly campaigned for this administration to speak up concerning what they think this administration can do better. So I'm, I'm happy you don't regret it, and I want more advocacy geared towards specific ministries, such as our power, to do what they can do. But uh, were you shocked by the reactions you've gotten from um, your fellow colleagues. colleagues in the industry who have been openly calling you out? Well, um, you know, every Nigerian has a right to their choice. And as a Nigerian, we have known over the years that once Nigerians choose their bias, it is very difficult to sway them. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that. And I don't regret it. You know, probably the only place where I probably have issues is where uh, they misdirect the attack from me to my children and, and, and my wife. But well, I... I've, they have a choice. They, they, they decided that this is what they want to do. Let them keep doing it. But the most important thing for me as a person is to speak to the government that I voted for. And this government cannot afford to fail. This government will succeed. I will keep speaking. I will keep telling them what I think it is the right thing to do. Okay. And another thing that I've said is that government must learn to be proactive not reactive. Okay. Yeah. Everybody who is in the cabinet must come out to work and they must give Nigerian timeline on how they want to 
achieve certain things that they want to achieve in their ministry. All right, Shay, let and me get Nigeria a few questions for you. see and feel that impact. Okay. Okay. So, Shay, um, you know, earlier when I asked you a question, you, in response, you said you're not a government official, you're a private citizen. But also, more importantly, so you're an influencer. You know, you have a huge platform. What has this, you know, your stance on politics, and the response that you're getting right now, what does that make you, how does that make you reflect on this platform that you have? And what's your advice to Nigerians who have platforms like yours, you know, and um, their involvement in politics or governance? You see, um, uh, I'm actually grateful to God that um, I have a voice that, um, uh, that is, that is loud enough for Nigerians to hear, and probably the people in, governor, uh, in government will also listen to. I personally don't regret my choice, and I believe that every other person who is influential should speak. But when we're speaking, we should speak from, uh, from an informed uh, perspective. It is easy for me, and probably easier for the kind of job I do to just criticize government and uh, dwell on government's failure. It makes for a better joke. I have been to events where I had cracked jokes. I remember one of the events that I went to, I think it was even the event where I saw uh, Idris Abdul Karim. And I said, Peter B uh, went to the stadium to watch uh, the Super Eagles play. And uh, we won the game, and people were happy. And that when Shetima went to watch the team, although we won the game, that six people died. That so the, the day that I met uh, Shetim, Shetima, and he wanted to have a handshake with me, I ran because I told him, "Oh God, I voted for you not to come and die." You know, this, these are some of the things. It is easier to make a joke with the failures of government. But I also want to learn to speak from an, inspect, uh, an informed perspective. There's been a lot of demarketing for Nigeria over the years. Maybe I've just gotten to that point where I feel that we should project a better image for Nigeria outside the shores of this country and on social media. But notwithstanding, while we start to build that image that we want to see of Nigeria, we must call on our government to do the right thing. The government owes Nigerian a better and a greater nation. And I believe that my voice should speak to that. And every other person who is influential should also lend their voice to see Nigeria get better. Let me, let me ask you about about money because usually people say that when influencers support a particular candidate it's because of what they expect to get the money the positions have you been compensated somewhat because people were saying on social media like, ah, i'm sure he has collected money that's why he's saying xyz have you been giving money by any party to support them or are you anticipating that they will give you money <clears throat> especially now that you are coming out to speak you know, I have, I have said it several times. I've granted interviews, and I've said any politician in Nigeria, dead or alive, that can point to Sheila and say, I made him, should come out. You know, um, when I supported uh, Ashiwaju or I supported Jonathan in 2014, I made my voice loud. And I have said it, posterity will judge each and every one of us. I am speaking from a place where I believe that Nigeria needs to get better. I campaigned for Sonwo Olu, I spoke up for him, I spoke up for Ashiwaju, and none of them, absolutely none of them, can say that they've given me money. No politician can even say it. None, none. None. I have never collected a dime from anybody. And you know, it is because we are losing, we are, we are gradually losing value and everything has become monetary in Nigeria. That is why people keep saying, oh, influencers have collected money. 
I know social media influencers who collect money to publicize uh, people or launder people's images. For them, it is their job. But for me, as Sheyi Law, I want a better nation and I understand Shea, the pains Shea, of the Shea, people and I will not monetize here. that. Shea, let me throw something in here. <clears throat> has your support, <clears throat> excuse me, has your support for Tinumbu affected the jobs you've collected mm. in the past one year? I, I, I can tell you categorically that um, supporting Tinumbu has made me poorer. <laughs> I remember during the time we were campaigning, I had to refund money to some people who were angry that I was supporting the administration. And I did. I did refund it about almost about 15.5 million. But because I believe in my choice, that was why I was bold enough to refund money and not back down from my support. Uh, everybody knows that uh, as a comedian, December is probably the high point of our events. And I lost quite a number of, uh, of clients because I supported this administration. Do I regret it? No, I don't. That is the truth. I believe that this administration will deliver. And I will keep lending my voice to see that they deliver the good governance that I want. I want a better Nigeria. And I will not stop speaking until I see that Nigeria gets better. That is just the truth. It has affected me, yes. But am I making money? I am making money in other means. I don't have to come outside and start saying, oh, this is where I make money and other stuff. You know? I am making money in other means. I mean, I, my, my, my dependence is not, it's not just on comedy. All right, great. All right, fantastic. So, Shane, you've clearly stated that you do not regret the statements you put out. But I'd like to ask you, Nigerians are watching, they are listening, what would you want to say to them? And I know that also this is a platform for the government to hear you out as well. What would you like to say to them, coincisely? Before I speak to Nigerians, I want to speak to the people in the government. Nigerians are crying. Nigerians are in pain. You owe it to Nigerians to do the right thing. <coughs> we must, as a matter of urgency, increase minimum wage. We must work on food availability and affordability. We must, as a matter of fact, work on seeing the Naira improve against the dollar. And to Nigerians, also to the people in government, we need to do something about electricity. I believe that if we can have a quick fix in terms of electricity, and for the long term, Nigerians will go to work and they will do better for themselves. And also on the people in government, most especially the presidency, you spoke about the initiative, the PCNG initiative, which is going back to uh, CNG-powered uh, buses for Nigerians. That particular initiative has to come into effect as soon as possible so that we can give some sort of transportation subsidy to Nigerians. I believe in transportation subsidy uh, uh, instead of a fuel subsidy. And to Nigerians, I want to say that you need to know that my support for the government is because of you and not against you. And that is why I will keep speaking to the people who are in the governance in government to do better for nigerians as a matter of urgency nigerians need to go back to the happy days nigerians are happy people and we ask for the barest minimum mm -hmm. if we see it you will see nigerians going back their lives with the happiness that we know them for nigerians right. are angry because they are hungry Okay. Let us feed Nigerians. Right, okay. Okay. Um, like I, I had to first, I started earlier by talking about my support for your stance, but you know, some people feel like your stance isn't, your stance isn't valid. Like, it does not enter off because your family isn't feeling it. You are the only one here. You have already shipped off your family. They are safe somewhere, um, and all of that. And there's another perspective of the fact that 
um, I have on this platform called for the government, for the president to reshuffle the cabinet. I feel like some ministers have already shown that they don't understand what they are doing. Do you agree that there should be a reshuffling? And do you agree with those that are saying you should not talk because your family is not in Nigeria? Now, um, for my family who are not in Nigeria, this is it. My wife, uh, in, in 2020, 2013 precisely, I, I spoke about my wife going to, the, going to the UK to study. And I didn't realize that dream until 2019. And in realizing the dream for my wife to go abroad to study, in 2019, she went to do a BSc course, which uh, uh, took about three years. And my wife is somebody who has a mind of her own. We work together as a family, but she also had an independent view. And she wanted to stay back. She felt she could, she could do things for herself over there. And we came to an agreement for her to be there. And you know that I'm a man who is always traveling. She wouldn't leave the children with me to start catering for the children. And so the children are with her. And I understand um, the anger of Nigerians in that, in that aspect, that he supported the government that is giving them pain and his children are abroad. I absolutely understand. Do I blame them for that? No. But then, can I take another decision and just bring my family back? If my wife agrees that they want to come back, absolutely, they will be back in Nigeria. And um, for the cabinet to, uh, uh, to be reshuffled, in my open letter to the president, I called on the president to say that uh, we shouldn't allow the incompetence of some people in the cabinet to uh, derail the administration. We, there are certain ministers we have not heard from in months. What are they doing? And I think by the time it's a year in this administration, we should see reshufflement in some ministries. That is what I believe. That is okay. what I think. Okay. Unless they start talking to Nigerians and implementing some of the initiatives that they have in their, in their cupboards. Okay. Hey, do, you, do you want to call out some of these ministers in your opinion? Like, I mean, that you specifically like... In some of us, there are some ministers we are feeling right now, like Minister for Power, there's no light, you know. So <laughs> we're not feeling, we're, we're, feeling. We're, not feeling. <laughs> we're not feeling. As right we're now. not feeling, yes, impact. we're not feeling, we're and not seeing, we're yes, calling, you we're out. calling him out. <laughs> so what are, who are these ministers you would like to call, um, call out right now? Ah, the Minister for Power automatically. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows the importance of power to, to Nigerians. And, you know, even the president said it when he was on the campaign trail that if we can fix power, that with ordinary screwdriver in Nigeria will make money. So the minister of power has a lot to do. I know he addressed the nation recently, mm. uh, talking about that uh, there are no alternatives. That is not what we want to hear. Mm. You have been elected to profess solution. What are the solutions that you are preferring? Uh, what are you, how are you going to do it? What time should we see, are we going to start seeing changes? You should be able to itemize timeline for the things that you want to do. The Minister for Agriculture is another person that I had a call out. And I believe that the Minister for Agriculture should work with state governance, uh, governments. I remember way back there was Operation Feed the Nation during the Obasan Joe's uh, administration in uh, uh, 1978 or thereabout. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do to see that Nigerians can feed themselves? Some of the rice meal that we have in Nigeria don't even have enough uh, uh, Parts to, 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 to maximize the efficiencies of their machines. So what are we going to do? How many hectares of lands are we going to uh, start uh, farming? To see that um, 
uh, at about uh, 1983 or thereabout, Nigeria had about 24 million hectares of land being cultivated and um, over almost 40 something years, uh, 40 years after, we have only been able to increase our farmlands uh, to about 35 million hectares. This is not what should be happening in Nigeria. If we are farming about 100 million hectares in Nigeria right now, it, 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 it will be a, a movement in the right direction. So I need to see, I need to see more from the Minister of <coughs> Agriculture. I need to see more from um, the Minister of Power. I need to see more from um, uh, uh, our Minister of uh, Petroleum. And maybe, and maybe gas. Let us, let us bring the CNG initiative to life. And if we're going to do it, we need to do it right. CNG conversions of buses has to come into effect. And we must not use substandard materials. Mm. Because um, the UK had tried it, the South Africa had tried it, and they eventually had to recall because of substandard materials and uh, explosions in, in, in vehicles and other stuff. So these are some of the ministers that I really want to come at. There are a lot of them, but for now, let us speak to these three people who are of high importance to Nigeria. Because okay, food transportation me... mm. has to do with uh, petroleum. Uh, uh, food availability has to do with the Ministry of Agriculture. And um, uh, work for Nigeria has a lot to do with electricity. Let me, let me ask you um, your opinion, your personal opinion, because I'm also trying to give you this platform to maybe redirect certain narratives about you. Um, there's a, a tweet I saw, I think it was yesterday. Um, was it DJ Switch or Switch? Or I can't remember, is it Switch? Mm. DJ Switch said that the reason why you voted for Tinubu is because of tribe. Uh, many people will say, oh, the, the, the 8.9 million people who voted for Tinubu are the people who are, we should hold responsible because they voted him because of tribe, primarily. In your view, let me ask you plainly and outrightly, why exactly did you believe that Shiwajibola Metinubu was the way forward for Nigeria? Okay, um, first... Uh, Ashwajibola Ahmed Tinubu, when he was the governor of Lagos State, has the highest number of his policies adopted by other states and even the federal government. First, um, in Lagos today, if you remove LASMA from our road, you know the chaos that will happen in Lagos today. Waste management improved drastically improved, you know, um, improved well in, uh, during the administration of uh, Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Sinubu. Um, the introduction of the BRUT was during the uh, Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Sinubu's administration. These are some of the policies that I want to see other state governments adopt. Because it is easy for Lagos State, for example, to subsidize transportation with the BRUT. But how many states can actually subsidize transportation? I'm not sure there are other states that can do that. And that is because a government came and put all this initiative and implemented them. And um, another thing is this. When I was in secondary school, I attended Methodist Boys High School, and my school was at um, Victoria Island. And I remember that there are two bus stops where we used to come down when we, when we were going to school then, we either come down at the Adjusi Adeogu roundabout or at the Marocco Sandfield uh, bus stop. <laughs> and I remember that before the uh, Bola and Tinubu's administration, where we had the Oriental Hotel today and the Civic Center used to be refuse dump. And there were every other week, we either hear of uh, stories of a dead body in those refuse dump and other stuff. Before those places were concession, and those businesses were built. And those areas have become better for it. Today, Oniru, like that used to be a place where they sell fishes and other stuff, is one of the uh, uh, bro of Lagos State today, where we have uh, um, you know, this massive real estate investment. Mm -hmm. I remember in 1998, 
when the redeemed Christian Church of God had Lekki 98 at the Lekki Beach. Beach. And we all, uh, uh, quite a, a number of Lagosians and people from outside attended that event. There was serious traffic going back from the Lekki Beach that day. And I remember walking through the place that is known as Osaka, London today. That place used to be a swamp. It was the administration of Bola Amentinubu that brought the changes that we're seeing in those areas today. How about that time in Lagos State where we used to say that the IMB building in front of the Babish is what is uh, yes. shining light into the eyes of the Mami water that was causing water to overflow its bank and was almost going to submerge Victoria Island. Mm -hmm. And administration came to start uh, uh, curbing the, the, uh, the water um, uh, problem there. And today, <laughs> maybe all the Mami waters have relocated from Barbage. And we have one of the top <laughs> uh, real estate projects in Nigeria in Barbage today. We know what Barbage and Kurama Beach used to be. Yeah. Before now, there are times where you will see a dead body on a Lagos road and the body will decay on the road. Mortals will climb over it and all those stuff. But today, we have the Lassan bus. We have improved fire service in Lagos. And administration started this movement. And the succession of previous administ of, uh, uh, administration, different administration in Lagos State, has brought serious improvements to Lagos State. This was all started with the Tinubu administration. Mm. These are some of the things that I saw. Tinubu was the one that in, uh, uh, introduced the Oracle uh, uh, system into uh, the civil service Post that I saw Lagos State civil service become one of the best in the country today and have some of their, uh, their policies adopted even at the federal level. These were the things that I saw. I saw competence and I decided to follow it. Okay. You know, for some people, they say, I have never collected a dime from Ashiwaju himself. I probably had the opportunity to meet him uh, four times in my right. entire life. You know? All right. And, and, and so where tribe comes in is what I don't know. Okay. Thank you very much for clearing. I just wanted you to clear that. Um, Shema has a question for you. All right. So, Shiri, I'd like to know, yeah, in your own opinion, what's the state of the nation's judiciary? You can speak on that. Oh, I'm told your mic is off. I'm so sorry about that. What's the, okay. what's the state? What's your assessment of the judiciary? Did you get that, Shay? Because uh, of the state of the judiciary. Yeah, the judiciary system. I'm the judiciary system, and, and, and you know, um, one of the one of the things that some Nigerians don't really put into consideration when we talk about governance is the fact that um, uh, we don't try to separate power, like where we have the judiciary, we have the legislative, and then the executive. A lot of Nigerians believe that the president has uh, uh, power over all, all the other uh, uh, arm of governor, uh, government. You know, they want the president to control the legislative and tell them what to do, that they shouldn't be able to buy cars. They want the president to be the one to dictate to the judiciary. The judiciary has its own autonomy. And uh, for me, there is a lot that has to come into play, and which is part of the things I think that uh, this presidency is trying to do, to give them the, uh, the uh, um, autonomy to work as they please, and which is why they've increased their budget in the judiciary uh, in the 2024 budget. And I believe that the judiciary has a lot of role to play to see that Nigerians get the justice that they deserve. Um, uh, we have to also, I think, uh, the judiciary has to work with um, the traditional institutions. Some of the cases that we see in our, courses, in our courts today are things that could be taken care of from the traditional, web, uh, uh, traditional uh, uh, system. Um, we need to see more of our customary, more of our customary and magistrate court functioning and um, uh, improvement in our in our high court uh, 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 systems. So you let me um, just so throw in this me, question. the judiciary is not functioning to. Let me just throw in this question because we don't have enough time. The, our national assembly seems to be 
we felt like we will have the Senate and the House of Rep will be checks. You know, they will be the ones um, calling for investigation or doing some checks. Do you feel like the 10th Assembly is impressing you in any way, or what would you expect them to do? And let me add to Tokwe's question that they are motto they want to buy. The, mm. What's that car again? Uh, they want to, to, yes, they want they Land to be able to what, drive what, through what, the bad what, what do you say to that? <laughs> that they are that not fixing. <laughs> Uh, uh, the truth is uh, the, the party of the president, the APC, has the majority in the, in the House, you know, in the National Assembly. And it's, they did a serious disservice to this administration with the purchase of the luxury vehicles. And ah, it, it's, it's, it's painful that they took that decision early in the administration, and they caused a lot of that caused a lot of backlash to this administration. And the fact that a senator came out to say that the roads to their constituencies are bad, that is why they need this type of vehicles to be able to go. Ah, you know, there are certain things that, uh, uh, certain thoughts that should you live mind. inside ah. you. <laughs> You shouldn't open your mouth to say it such mm. outside. It should be sweet in Yoruba when you say it in Yoruba. It, it, it mean, shows, that it English shows share, you need to say it is not... It's not entry. English share is not it's entry. Not, uh, say it in Yoruba. Or, 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 Just keep it in English for uh, The of English... Oh, no, I will... Oh, no, I will... Oh, no, I will... Oh, no, I will... Oh, It pained me when I saw that. And, and, and you know, you, you, you are the first, you are the closest to the people yeah. at the national level. So and then you decided to do that. And you are doing it, not even patronizing made in Nigerian vehicles. Okay, we have to wrap and up. And we are Mr. complaining Sheilo. about forex problem in Nigeria. Mm, yeah, time has gone. Time has gone. The National yeah. Assembly 